This week on Fin Chasers, we are headed to the Dominican Republic. Here is the best blue marlin fishing right now in the world. We also had big turbines, big permits, big yaks, and also the bonefish are crazy down here. You can come here and do all the fishing that you need. This week on the Fin Chasers, we're headed to the Dominican Republic for a red hot blue marlin bite. We made this trip happen fast and we're praying for good weather. No idea what we're getting ourselves into, but I'm up for it. The Fin Chasers is about a world record or a tournament. Very targeted, very specific. We raise the bar for ourselves because for me, that brings out the best in me. That juices me. Oh my God, it's a giant. World record fish. How cool. <laughs> Never, ever, ever, ever give up. This is Fin Chasers. If you all watched the Sunny in Philadelphia episode, they tried to break Wade's supposedly record of drinking how many beers? 70 something beers on a transatlantic flight. So in the DR style, we're gonna redo it Fin Chaser style. So every Marlin we catch, we're gonna put a mark on our shirt just like they did in Sunny in Philadelphia when they drank a beer, they marked it on our shirt, all right? That's a lot of Marlin. You drank That's a lot, a lot of, of beer. Marlin. thing about these dog fights is every click of this lever drag is about two pounds of drag. We tested it so I can go past strike and know exactly how much more pressure I'm adding. It's invaluable. But this fish is down deep. He doesn't want to come up. So that little bit of pressure, I put about four more pounds of drag and now I'm making up on him. Nice fish! This is what I live for. Me against the fish. Yeah. yeah. Pretty work, Cap! We're releasing all the billfish. So instead of landing the fish, we're gonna cut the leader using a special release tool. That's a $1.2 million fish in the Mid-Atlantic, around 80 pounds, they think. Folks, we just kicked off 2017 Fin Chasers because- We are the Fin Chasers. We are the Fin Chasers. There's nothing better than a double header. And this time, it's Wade and I hooked up into two billfish. And that is as good as it gets.
white and blue, baby. <laughs> I may not be in the Baseball Hall of Fame, but this is my kind of doubleheader. Okay, Ian, you got, you got the honor. Dos, tres. Hey! More to come. hat on this head, I hate to cover up the hair, but I put a hat on because we're in the sunny Dominican Republic and I got to be able to see the fish and stay not sunburned because this is only day one, baby. But I am getting a little tired, so I'm going to take a little breather and Ian's going to be the next angler up. So stay tuned because the next fish up is for my man Ian. I can't wait. Ian Perez. You better get to know that name. Once it was his turn, it only took about 10 minutes, and now Ian is hooked up. All right, Ian! Well, that was special to watch. This is one hell of a kid, one hell of an angler. years old, he's caught and released over 70 billfish this year alone. Since Ian got the fish, he's the official marker anyway, but this one needs extra special because he landed a fish. So, put the mark on the back. One more and a lot more to go. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Oh, we're coming up on this bed right now. What this is, is something that's anchored to the bottom, and they have this long rope, and they've tied a big palm frond on here, and you're creating structure where there was none before. Fish attracting devices, fads. If you don't know what they are, all you need to do is fish them once, and you will never forget. What they were designed for is to create structure where there was none. Finally, the fishing slowed down, and we're taking a moment to reflect on what we just witnessed. One of the challenges in the Dominican Republic is the weather. Because we are immediately in very deep water, and that's why the mullein fishing is so good, the weather can be challenging. You've got to set yourself a few days and know that one of those days may be a weather day. We got very good weather. This is fishable anywhere, but I will tell you tomorrow, something, some wind is supposed to come in, a front is supposed to come, so we might not get out. Well, that didn't take long. Wait, what's going on? Wait, you're getting a little old. Are you sure you don't want to sit on the chair? <laughs> really? I know Wade's hooked up into something big. It's time to get Ian involved in a little good natured chop breaking. <laughs> What a day of offshore fishing. Six or seven blue marlin, a white marlin, and an 80 pound tuna? That is epic anywhere in the world.
It's time for the very short ride home, but it's also time to fly the flags. I don't know where the practice originated, but flying flags for releases of billfish certainly didn't start in Cap Canna, but there's no place in the world where they fly more. Charter boat, you're never going to get rid of the fin chasers. So. It is rocking like Donkey Kong. Say hello to your new family. <laughs>
but we can never, ever, ever give up. Time to get hooked into a good tarpon, and he spits a hook. If it's not one thing, it's another. It's 1 a.m., and just when I think it's time to get a little sleep, I get a text from Paul. I found him. No camera, out fishing, catching fish. Thank God for a cell phone. Nice job, Paul. Snooky. There she goes. Oh, dude, two days ago and all these places were in the hotel room. Unbelievable. They closed the port again. It's blowing 30 knots, so we better find some fish from shore. Same story, different day. The waves are high and the fishing's tough. But well, you know me. Never, ever, ever give up. Hey Ian, do me a favor. Just rub that rod right like that. Okay, thank you. Young Ian was our good luck charm on the boat the other day. I'm gonna see if he can give me a little luck inshore. Every now and then a fish comes in here and blasts this bait up. So it's spot number seven or number eight. I don't even know anymore. In the midst of me casting and casting and casting to no avail, I look over and Adam's hooked up. Good news? He hooked a good tarpon. Bad news, he has to land it in a lagoon behind him, and there's only one way in. All right, let's land this fish. Yes, sir. Because maybe the star of the show could fish now. Enjoy it, because you're never going to cast another rod again. Just saying. Try and turn it, turn it, the reel to the right. We get this fish led to the beach. I got the leader in my hand. I'm just about to land it. And the hook pulls. That's how the last couple of days have been going. No one catches a fish until I do. Okay? No, no, we'll we got that. All right. Go. The long story of how we get to go places for this one is truly like a classic example framework of the show. We hear about a bite, we reach out to somebody, they tell us it's true and not true or whatever and we go. This one, putting it together within two weeks was truly the epitome of the fin chasers. If anybody wants to take advantage of this fishery, I, I dare to say before it disappears, I don't think it's going anywhere. No. But Dara Sport Fishing, check them out on the web. They're easy to find. JJ and Darren have been the most gracious hosts. But guys, thank you so much. And again, I told you, once that fin chaser door opens up, I usually keep my foot in it. So we <laughs> wanted to come back. That's right. Yeah. And remember, that ice part off the fin chasers. All right. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> We put this thing together in 24 hours with information mined on the internet. 
But in the end, we discovered the greatest blue marlin fishery in the world, an undiscovered, awesome inshore fishery. This is what it's all about. This is Fin Chasers.